Hey, happy sunshine family. Welcome back to the Lunacy Channel. It is Monday, September 11th, 2017 at 11.45 a.m. Pacific Time. It's 9-11, guys. You know, the day the Trade Centers came down <laughs> was a very interesting day for me. I was being sworn in at the last apartment that I served as a police officer for. I got sworn in as the trade centers were coming down. Like, I think one of them had already come down and we were watching that on TV and then we had to go into the meeting room in the police department. And we had this real quick ceremony and they gave us our badges and then we went back to the other room where the TV was and we just continued watching the events. We had a lot of stuff scheduled for that day. Training and equipment issue. We really didn't do any of that. We were just mesmerized by the television, by the events that we were being told were taking place in New York City and also in the Pentagon, in the airways of our country. And many years later, it's now 16 years after this incident, uh, I am here talking to you today about an interesting book that was published by Dr. Judy Wood. And here's the page on Amazon. It's called, Where Did the Towers Go? Evidence of Directed Free Energy Technology on 9-11. Now, I bought this book. I've actually bought two copies of this book. And you can see that Right up here in my Amazon account, it says, I purchased this item on September 17th, 2016, so just about a year ago. And this was the second copy of this book that I bought. And this particular purchase that's listed on this page, I shipped that to my father. And let's pull up another page here. And all I'm going to do is type in my father's name into a search engine here. We're just going to go to one of the links that pops up on the search results. And we're going to see that he's got his resume out online. Now my father worked for the shadow government of the United States. He was the youngest project manager, project leader, project director that DARPA had appointed to that particular position ever at the time that my father was hired into DARPA. So we're just going to click on this Scrum Alliance profile. And while this is loading up, I'm going to read Dr. Judy Wood's words and the author's preface to this book. Faced with intolerable ideas or with intolerable acts, people in very large numbers have begun simply denying them, declaring them, quote, unreal, unquote. And thus, with a word, striking them out of existence. But the pattern itself of not seeing is inescapable, evident to anyone who looks. And that's a quote by Eric Larson, A Nation Gone Blind. Okay, so my father's Scrum Alliance profile has pulled up here. And under this experience, this is all in reverse chronological order. But we can see right here, under his experience with the United States Air Force, 1966 to 1986, 
so 20 years. He started at the Air Force Weapons Laboratory in Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico, right here. He made some sort of discovery in the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, said, we want you. Come work for us in Arlington, Virginia. And we stayed in the same house for the rest of his career. On paper, he moved around to a bunch of different places. He was in DARPA. He was in the Air Force Office of Scientific Research. He was also in the Air Force Office of Scientific Investigations, or AFOSI. He finished out his career at the United States Air Force, Project Forecast 2. And then he went to headquarters, to Air Force Systems Command, and he was the liaison between headquarters and Project Forecast 2. Now when I get in and dig into what Forecast 2 is, Project Forecast 2 is the project for the U.S. Air Force that coordinates every one of their other projects. This is a master project. And I wonder, knowing that the weather is forecast, is that why they name this Forecast? Project Forecast 2? I wonder what happened to Project Forecast 1. Was there such a program? Anyways, after his military service, my father worked in the private sector defense industry. Westinghouse, Butler Service Group, Answer, IBM. His very last position at IBM, he was a contract employee and he was going into the NSA for his job every day. That's the National Security Agency, the Puzzle Palace. Interestingly enough that my father's boss when he was at DARPA was a man by the name of Arden Bement. And let's pull up a search page for Arden Bement. If we just put in NIST or the National Institutes of Standards and Technology and WTC for World Trade Center after the name Arden Bement, we're going to get some interesting search returns. The important thing here to realize, or to take in, is that Arden Bement was handpicked by George Bush about two months, just shy of two months after the trade centers came down. And Arden Bement was named the director of the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, NIST, right here. And while Arden Bement was at the helm of NIST, they wrote the official lie to the American people and the world about the events that happened on 9-11 with the World Trade Center. This man, Arden Bement, he was in my living room. He was in my dining room, in my house growing up. My mom cooked dinner for this guy. So I was blown away when I learned that he is the one who headed the charge to lie to the world. And ever since that point, this man right here, Danny Windsor, has not been in Kansas anymore. I've been trying to pick through the deception ever since. I've got a father who works for DARPA, who worked on Project Forecast 2. We're seeing Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Jose, Hurricane Katia. Obviously man-made artificial storms obviously a demonstration of just how much control and effect they have over the weather. And I don't know what to do about this, guys. There is some energy in our country and in our world 
that has fucking run away with all of our trust, our money, our ideas, and has weaponized them, all of those categories, against us. And it's with a really heavy heart, guys, that I'm here showing you this fucking web page with my dad's resume. And you can find a PDF three-page version that says it's the quote-unquote short version out there online. So when I, when I became aware of the, the greater deceptions going on in our world, I would ask my father questions. I've brought a lot of things to his attention and he has not responded meaningfully to any of them. I've talked to him about the moon landings and the obvious video and photographic forensic analysis that can be done to show that all of that media is faked. looked at the history of fluoride. I vectored to him a link for the inconvenient tooth and his response was to make a dental appointment and get a prescription for the toothpaste with the highest level of fluoride allowed by our country. So for several years, I've been trying to start a dialogue, a meaningful dialogue with my father who worked at DARPA. And just going forward, I'll nickname this DARPA Dad when I talk about my father and his work history. I don't know what kind of hand or role my father played in any of this. I wonder if he had advanced knowledge of the attacks on 9-11. I don't know if he did. I wonder if he understands what's going on with these hurricanes, with earthquakes, with tornadoes. If you look at my Waging War with Weather series, there's some really blatant observations that show that a group of people in our world apparently has harnessed control of the weather. And the citizens of the United States, the people that are living on the land, are in the crosshairs of all of these weaponized ideas that happened at DARPA. and were then rolled off into unacknowledged special access programs. It makes me sick to my stomach, guys, to have questions about my dad's involvement with these horrible tragedies. I've tried to answer them. I've tried to I've tried to get more information and I might as well be talking to a brick wall. I don't know what to do about this. But I know that ultimately the answer is love. Now I'm going to explain to you what I mean by love. Love is to live a one vibrational experience. Now, I certainly don't share the same vibration with my father. The only vibration that I have is just some allowance. If everybody's just doing the best they can, well, I don't understand how letting your ideas, your brilliance be weaponized is the best that you can do. But if there's a perception that you have in your head that this was the best thing to do, to have your ideas be weaponized, to control the weather, or to attack the American people, 
I'd really like to know what perception you had. Because I know that all behavior has its roots in perception. And I can't understand the perception unless we have a dialogue, and there's no meaningful dialogue. So love here is just about understanding that, hey, something's going on, and I don't have all the information. And others are unwilling to cooperate to give me information. And really what this is about, this is about me taking a stand and setting an example for anybody else who has parents or family members that worked in DARPA or the shadow government. We today, on 9-11, September 11th of 2017, 16 years after the attacks, we are bringing love and the hard questions to our family members who have proven that they have zero or one degrees of relationship to this low vibrational energy and we're asking questions in a space of allowance in a space without judgment and I've asked my father all the questions that I would think that you guys would want to have answered and I don't have any answers to give you so what I do have is I've set up an email address DARPA D-A-R-P-A -A, DAD D-A-D at protonmail.com P-R-O-T-O-N-M-A-I-L dot com I think it's about time to open this dialogue up to the lunacy family now right now I'm the only one that has access to DARPA DAD at protonmail.com and when you send an email to my father to this particular email address as long as it's in a loving vibration asking questions and stating wow what's your experiences your personal experiences are around 9-11 around all these weather manipulation attacks tell him how you feel tell him what your experiences were and ask him if he had any involvement in this. Tell him that you know that his boss at DARPA is the one that lied to the world about the World Trade Center attacks. Ask him to ask Arden Bement why he lied. This is how love breaks through the bullshit, guys. Now, I'm a pretty bright light, but I'm not bright enough to get my father to budge. I don't know if he's ever going to budge. But what I do know is I will not sit by quietly for the rest of my life and give him a free pass on answering these very pointed questions that appear to be very pertinent about the nature of who he is and what he has done in his past and how that affected and continues to affect the quality of all of our lives. Uncovering deception and dismantling it is an exercise in self-authorship of perception. And there's nobody out there who knows this better than Dr. Judy Wood. And that's what her author's preface is really all about. So I'm going to read that. It's just a couple pages. And let this percolate in your consciousness. Let it be the raw material for writing an email a high vibrational email written from a place of love for everybody's highest and best purposes. An email to my father asking him questions. Putting him on notice that we are aware of his connections to DARPA and that although we don't know exactly what he did, we have our suspicions and we have 
big questions that are going to be answered before I modify any of the boundaries that I have drawn and placed. Healthy boundaries between me and my father. So now I'm reading from the preface. These are Dr. Judy Wood's words. For the record, I do not believe that our government is responsible for executing the events of 9-11, nor do I believe that our government is not responsible for executing the events of 9-11-01. This is not a case of belief. This is a crime that should be solved by a forensic study of the evidence. Before it can be determined who did it, it must first be determined what was done and how it was done. The order of crime solving is to determine what happened, then how it happened, for example, by what weapon, and then who did it. <clears throat> and only then can we address why they did it, i.e. a motive. Let us remember what is required to convict someone of a crime. You cannot convict someone of a crime based on belief. <clears throat> you cannot convict someone of a crime if you don't even know what crime to charge them with. If you accuse someone of murder using a gun, you'd better be sure the body had a bullet hole in it. And yet, before noon on 9-11-2001, we were told who had done it and how it had been done. This before any investigation had even conducted, been conducted to determine what had been done. As of this publication, <clears throat> only one person, myself, Dr. Judy Wood has conducted a comprehensive investigation to determine what happened to the World Trade Center WTC complex. A question that is part of a federal case I filed. It might be surprising for readers to learn that the National Institutes of Standards and Technology or NIST did not analyze <clears throat> what happened to the World Trade Center. The very first step in any scientific forensics investigation, that is, NIST did not analyze the collapse of the World Trade Center towers despite the fact that their report is entitled <clears throat> NIST NCS TAR 1 dash Final Report on the Collapse of the World Trade Center Towers. NIST's mandate from Congress was to 1. Determine why and how WTC-1 and WTC-2 collapsed following the initial impacts of the aircraft and why and how WTC-7 collapsed. Yet two pages later in a footnote, the NIST report says that, quote, The focus of the investigation was on the sequence of events from the instance of aircraft impact to the initiation of collapse for each tower. For brevity, in this report, this sequence is referenced to as the, quote, probable collapse sequence, end quote, although it does not actually include the structural behavior of the tower after the conditions for collapse initiation were reached and collapse became inevitable, end quote. The NIST report, that is, merely offered a probable, a hypothetical, collapse sequence purporting to explain the sequence of events leading up to the collapse of the World Trade Center towers. Yet NIST did not determine why and how World Trade Center 1 and World Trade Center 2 collapsed following the initial impacts of the aircraft, which was their mandate. Had NIST determined why and how the towers were destroyed, they would have first determined what happened by dealing with the phenomena that are empirically confirmed to have occurred. They're visual observations, guys. As is glaringly evident, they did not do this. I challenged NIST on their scientifically flawed report. Nothing that the images presented in their report, as well as their probable collapse sequence, violated the laws of physics. In their written reply to me, they openly acknowledged that they had not analyzed the collapse. Quote, 
As stated in NCS TAR1, NIST only investigated the factors leading to the initiation of the collapse of the World Trade Center towers, not the collapse themselves. That is, the NIST personnel admitted their report to be a fraud. Their position is that if they did not analyze the quote-unquote collapse, they need not address why their probable collapse sequence, in fact, violates the laws of physics. They are willing to accept responsibility only for saying that the building obeyed the laws of physics before it was destroyed. This document, in which NIST states that it did not analyze the collapse, is part of my legal case and is available in documents posted on my website, Judy Wood's website. A large portion of the sub-report, NCS TAR 1-6, contains information that appears to be the product of detailed analysis of what happened after the building's destruction was initiated. But in response to my informing them that their apparent analysis violated the laws of physics, NIST, as said, stated that they had not analyzed the collapse despite thousands of pages giving the appearance of analysis. It is congruent or sorry, it is incongruent for NIST to report on something that they acknowledge they did not analyze. The entire NIST report, including its title, NCSTAR1, Final Report on the Collapse of the World Trade Center Towers, is a deception. Dr. Morgan Reynolds, in the case he filed, addressed how this crime was not committed with airplanes. Remember, to convict someone of a crime, you need to prove how the crime was committed. It may surprise you to learn that there is no actual verifiable evidence confirming that airplanes crashed at any of the four locations on 9-11-01. However, as Dr. Reynolds shows, there is an abundance of evidence to the contrary. That does not mean there were no airplanes, it only means that no evidence of alleged airplanes was found at the crime scenes. It also does not mean that eyewitnesses were dishonest or did not see what they believed were airplanes. But what this does mean is that there is a significant contradiction between the physical evidence and the story we are given. I'm going to read that sentence again because this is what everything boils down to in this deception and in every other deception that we talk about on my channel. But this does not mean, excuse me, but what this does mean is that there is a significant contradiction between the physical evidence and the story we are given. Significant contradiction between the physical evidence and the story we are given. You cannot legally convict someone of murder using a gun if a body has no bullet holes in it, no matter how many people thought they saw the accused shoot the gun. Once again, you cannot convict someone of a crime based on belief. Otherwise, magic tricks could be used to convict anyone of a crime, and we end up in a similar situation to the original Salem witch hunts where people were tried and executed without there being any evidence of the accusations made against them. That sounds a lot like the transcripts that we just read through. Parker Stills' testimony in Knoxville Grand Jury Hearing. He had a lot of statements about belief in those transcripts. And there was an indictment issued off of belief and deception. The jury was pointing out significant contradictions between the physical evidence and the story they were given. Right there. That's the pattern to look for, guys. So many facets of our reality has significant contradictions between the physical evidence and the story that we were given. Okay, continuing. Many people have speculated as to who committed the crimes of 9-11 and or 
how they did so. But without addressing what happened, speculation of this kind is nothing more than conspiracy theory, a phrase that also describes the box cutter story we were given before noon on 9-11-01. My own research, not speculation, is a forensics investigation of what happened to the World Trade Center complex on 9-11-01. I don't address who did it, nor am I concerned with that question. Before issues of that kind can even be addressed, we must first determine what happened. And that is the objective of my research. By definition, research that is purely empirical cannot be about and has nothing to do with conspiracy theory of any kind. The fact that others in the mainstream media, the alternative media, and the so-called 9-11 truth movement promote various theories about 9-11 as irrelevant to my research. On the other hand, to determine what happened, we must address all of the available evidence, all of the observations. This is why when I go through and investigate Heather Ann Tucci and Randall K. Bean, I make videos about observations. I may not have an explanation for those observations, but the first thing we have to do is gather our empirical evidence, our observations. Empirical evidence, these these are things that a court could take judicial notice of because they stand on their own merit. They're inassailable. They are truth. Anyone declaring who did what or how they did it before they have determined what was done <clears throat> is merely promoting either speculation or propaganda. The popular chant, 9-11 was an inside job, <clears throat> is scientifically speaking no different from the chant that 19 bad guys with box cutters did it. Neither one is the result of a scientific investigation supported by evidence that would be admissible in court. Neither identifies what crime was committed or how it was committed. So let us consider the body of empirical evidence that must be explained in order to determine what happened. What is presented here is not a theory and it is not speculation, it is evidence. Here then is the evidence of what happened on 9-11-2001. Those are the words of Dr. Judy Wood before she even goes into her investigation of 9-11. She says, we need to gather evidence, factual observations first and determine what happened. Only then can we determine who did it and why. So what I ask the Lunacy family to do is to think about Dr. Judy Wood's words To take these ideas about working from solid observations, empirical fact, and self-authoring your own perception about what happened, that's the first step. We've got a whole lot of observations with Heather Ann Tucci and Randall K. Bean, and in my next video, I'm going to add another one to the pile. I called the Blount County health department to get information about the possible death record for Parker Still. And I was shut down before I could even get his name and date of birth out. And I'll play that recording for you. So just to draw a nice, neat little boundary around this video, I just want to sum up and say that guys, I've had a front row seat for the shadow government and all the deception that's been going on ever since I was born. My father, Harry Windsor, worked for DARPA. He's a brilliant dude. He is smart as shit. He's the kind of brain that I want breaking apart all these different deceptions. 
not holding them together. And obviously my voice is not loud enough or strong enough. My light is not bright enough on its own to crack Harry V. Windsor, to get in there to his consciousness. And I don't know if us working together is gonna to do that or not. But I'm really tired. I don't have a lot of energy anymore to bring this stuff to Harry Windsor. And I am asking for some help from you, from the family. Any of you high vibrational souls out there that have some love, some allowance, some questions, please send them to DARPA Dad, D A R P A D A D, at protonmail.com. If you have anything for me, you can send those to lunacy, L U N A S E E, at protonmail.com. I love you guys a lot, and we'll be back with a phone call with the Department of Health, Blount County, Tennessee.